Hello, coders. Let's just wait for that to come in. Yes, it has come in. Hello, coders. I hope you're all well. Bear with me just a second. Uh, yes, cool. Awesome. That's gone. That's gone. Wonderful. Hello, coders. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all having a su superior, su su fantastic, superior, fantastic um, weekend. Uh, we, we recently took uh, Murphy out for a, a bit of a run with his um, ball catcher. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. Got himself covered in muck, mine, but he loves it. Uh, so he's chilling out downstairs um, with um, with my wife and we and she's watching TV. I'm up here doing the, uh, the usual stream today. Um, although it's not really a usual stream. It is a... We're rebuilding how to code well, <laughs> you know, just because. No, seriously, we, we are working on how to code well.net today. Um, this is, I'm going to show you some things that I probably wouldn't have shown you last year because I would have thought that they would have been deemed as sensitive. But th these, this, I want to, I, I want to try and make myself as accountable as possible with this project. Um, and uh, I would like this project, as I've talked on did the Discord server, as the project that I do on the Sunday streams, dedicate the Sunday streams to. Um, and this project is the How to Code Well website. And if I go over to uh, the code here, you'll see uh, a roadmap. You'll see a roadmap. The actual website, if I go to it, if I go to How to Code Well, dot net um, this is how it looks as it stands so it's a little bit of a um, it's a little bit I don't know uh, I'm gonna be very self-critical it's awful <laughs> it's awful I don't like it one bit um, it was basically put together because I needed a website for the YouTube channel um, and it's 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 like a jumble sale of things, and I really want to make this a little you know far more better. Um, prime the primary prime primary thing for this is um, the courses. So this is all this is um, it's running off of Symphony at the moment. We're going to come away from that, and I'll tell you I'll talk to you about the um, what we're going to do. Um, the technology wise, the roadmap and everything. It's going to take a long time for this project to go through and go through the motions. Um, so, okay. All right. So what we have here, I'll go through each, each thing. So we've got, um, the learn how to code well, uh, weekly programming tutorials and discussions from, uh, myself and the top bar here, the menu here, um, merch shop, Courses, challenges, blog, Discord, subscribe, podcast, and live. Um, I, so I think what I'm going to do is drop um, a few of these. The the ones that I really want to focus on is the courses um, and the blog, um, and potentially a way for linking to the challenges and 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 the podcast as well. The the dynamic data of how to code well that's coming through the various different mediums are um, the blog articles and we'll talk about the blog articles in more detail in just a second um, the blog articles the the actual courses the tutorials um, the podcast as well and also um, going live so at the moment we have on here we've got our Udemy and Skillshare courses um, and then we've got these awful banners <laughs> that get plumped in, um, at various places of the website, um, which is, which is shocking. I don't, I really don't like this at all. Um, you know, you know, these websites where people, um, scrape YouTube videos, um, and, and put it on their site with their banners. It's a bit like that. I feel it's not great. Um, it doesn't do how to code well justice whatsoever. Um, so we're going to, we're going to rebuild this and we're going to rebuild this. I, I would like to think properly. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the blog for a minute. If I clicked onto the blog, 
we get this again a very annoying banner um, I can't even remove this bit here um, there won't be banners in the new website <laughs> Not like this anyway. This is terrible. This is like half the page. Um, okay, so this was running off of a, um, a, a Python script. A Python script was running um, during the weekends to pull down the latest videos um, that I put in the blog playlist. And it would they would put be put here. <laughs> as separate pages so it will populate the database with you know the various bits and pieces um, and they would be here and if I was to click on one of these say the, this one for instance um, we would have the video that's awful <laughs> absolutely awful and this would be the body of the video which is terrible because this is formatted for YouTube not for a quote-unquote blog um, however there are some some copy that I could use I suppose um, yeah, but it's not great. Now, if I was to uh, also look at the other content in the deemed blog, we also have um, <coughs> uh, some of the very old podcasts. Um, so the ones I did with like Nathaniel and Adam Kolb and uh, um, Tom Varel and Jeremy Onion, um, they were in here. And um, I, I want to remove them from the blog because they're not the blog, they're for the, por the, for the podcast. So anything that isn't a tutorial, isn't a course, and isn't a podcast, I am classing as a blog, a blog post. Um, which means that, um, you know, if I, if I clicked on page two, for instance, you know, these are all, apart from perhaps this one, um... Uh, and maybe the the old style web developers working weeks. Um, these are what I would deem as content for a blog. And I what I would like to do is write a blog post around these eventually, eventually. Um, so these would be there on their own separate pages, that kind of stuff. <coughs> so that's what I'm deeming as the blog. Um, and then, of course, we have the podcast, and if I clicked on the podcast, the podcast will go to the podcast website, um, which is the howtocodewell.fm. So it's a totally different um, website, um, and uh, which is fine, which is fine. The trouble, though, is that this is built in a different language than the main website, howtocodewell.net. Um, this is running it of Sculpin. Um, whereas the other one was in Symphony, um, and also I'm having to manually update all of all of the uh, well the episodes. When an episode goes out, that's an actual you know a file change. I have to create a markdown file and push that up. So I'm hoping that this rebuild of the main site will also help with the management of the you know building the articles, because I want to do this uh, using a content management system. <laughs> uh, and we'll talk about that in just a second we'll talk about that in just a second so that's the podcast they're the episodes this is the blog articles and then if we go to courses we have the actual courses themselves um, so we have some free courses we have some paid for courses as well and of course we have the courses that I've done for publication companies such as uh, Manning Publications and Pact Publications. So we have Docker in Motion and uh, the Microservices course. And there is another course for Pact, but I don't think I've added, added it yet. It's the uh, Clean Coding course. Um, and the reason why this is such a dated site, uh, in the sense that the actual content is old, because if I went, if I went to the, the blog itself, um, this was done in uh, the 9th of the 2nd, 2019, the Python script no longer works because I think YouTube changed... Um, the way it works, the, the the way the API worked, so it fails, which is a shame. Um, uh, otherwise, I would have just left this going, right? And, and it would just built the pages out. Um, but really, I, I I want to be doing this manually myself by creating blog posts around it. So that's why that content um, stopped working, just because I didn't have time. Um, to fix the Python script, and then the reason why the ch courses. Um, I haven't, up, you know, updated the courses is because this is actually, and this is horrible, this is shameful for me to say, but these, are, this is actually done through a JSON file. 
a JSON file on the server um, and it loops over that JSON file and it produces all of this stuff. Essentially what I was trying to do was mimic an API endpoint um, and then eventually build the API, build the content management system for this to, to, to actually, you know, do its thing. Uh, but I never got around to doing that. So that is why this content is very, very old. This is why I think this website is actually very embarrassing for me because this should be the the way, the place people go to for how to code well. Um, and it's really, really bad. <laughs> So, um, so that there's that, and also, of course, there is the. If I clicked on live here, I think this only works in Chrome, unfortunately, but this will go to the live stream um, of Twitch when it's there. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, issues with all of this, and this is what I want to be playing with um, on the Sunday streams. I want to be building a a new website for this. Now, I talked a lot about this on Twitter, and I, I talked a lot about this on the Discord. However, I didn't go into detail as to how I would actually come up with, you know, start this project and and uh, and, and work through all of the bits and pieces. And also the uh, extra features that I want on this uh, this website. So let me let me go over now to the, the roadmap. So this is um, the... the um, the roadmap for uh, how to code well, as it stands, there's there's going to be more things added as the project goes on, of course. Um, and don't try not to take too much uh, notice of the actual dates on these things. This is just for me to see as sort of what goes first. In fact, this whole this whole um, roadmap thing here, the the Gantt chart type thing. Um, it, in my view, it we don't need it. it. It's just a list of, of, of stuff. And I'm using a Kanban board here. And as you can see, there's 39 issues in, in, in uh, the to do. And some of these issues have issues within them, like sub issues, if you will. Um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about this. So the first thing I want to do is a project setup. And I'll talk about the components behind the, the the technology behind this um, in in just a mo, <coughs> but I've split this up into sections. So we have the blog page, um, the courses page, um, and we have the live page. Right. So this is what I'm deeming, and I, what I've done on the actual issues is I've put a, a label MVP, minimum viable product, to meet the MVP. There are features in here that. Um, will happen after the MVP, after the first ish, uh, iteration. So this includes the backlog, if you will. So the first thing we're going to do is the project setup. That's what we're going to focus on today. And then once that's done, we're going to look at the blog stuff. And then we're going to uh, go down this this uh, list of epics. And if I showed you in the epics, they have, you know, all of these these um, tasks. So there's, you know, there's loads, there's loads and loads and loads. One thing I should say before I even get into the weeds of these things is that, um, yes, I want to dedicate the Sunday streams to this. However, um, I, I will be working on this um, in the evenings. So I think what will happen, hopefully, is that when I come on to the Sunday streams, I'll be able to say such and such is done. Um, I won't go into detail as to it being done because I really want the streaming to be the building. I want to be building on the stream <coughs> rather than talking about it in in as much depth as I am now, if that makes sense. Um, however, I'm more than happy to get your input um, on on this as always. So. If you've got any suggestions, then uh, do let me know. Let's talk about the let's talk about the technology. I'm just going to grab a, a a sip of my tea. Okay, so I mentioned this on Twitter and on the Discord server, but we're going to go into more depth. So, the front end of this. <coughs> Actually, before I go into the technology, let's talk about the features. I, I'm, I've showed you that we have a courses page. I've showed you that we have a blog page and a podcast website. Um, 
and I would like to have all of those things and the, and the live page. I would like to have those things worked um, dynamically fed from a from a, uh, a content management system, a CMS, through a, a bunch of APIs. But there's more to this than just that, um, which gives it a little bit more complexity. Stuff that is a be above and beyond the MVP. Um, so what I would like to do, and, and for those who watch the streams, you'll know that I'm doing a design patterns course in PHP, plus there is another course, which is the JavaScript course. Uh, these two courses, the, the JavaScript fundamentals course and the PHP design patterns course, I'm deeming as premium courses. These are courses that won't be on, um, won't, won't all be on YouTube. There'll be courses that are, are people will will pay to get and all the bits and pieces that belong to it. Um, so I'm hoping that the, by the time those courses are done um, and, and, and published, published, however I publish them, um, whatever platform I put them on, um, the website here would be ready for people to use the howtocodewell.net to access these courses. So what I would like to do is I would like to, if you can see here, we've got user auth. So I would like to have a user login section. So a user would log in and they would, they would, they would see, um, they would select the t a tier of, of how they would, uh, the package that they they're after. And we'll talk about that perhaps maybe in the next sort of streams, but there's going to be a tiered, a tiered offering, shall we say. Um, and what I would like is f when you're logged in, when you're a, a user of the system, you'll have a record of the previous courses that you've um, that you've accessed through How to Code Well. So it's almost like your course library. So that's what I would like, uh, a course library per person. Um, and also I would, what, what people don't know yet, and it's something that I haven't said for for various reasons, but what people don't know is that for all the tutorials that I put on YouTube, I also put them on Vimeo, and I put them on Vimeo in a private um, in a private sort of space. Nobody can access these at the moment; uh, only I can, um, because the idea is that I would like to have. And, and by the way, with Vimeo, I pay for pay a monthly fee for Vimeo, um, and what I would like to do, because Vimeo is paid for. Um, there's no adverts on Vimeo. There's loads of adverts on YouTube, as you as you as you fully well know. Um, so what I would like is, as I mentioned with the tiers, when someone subscribes to a certain tier, I would like to have to show them the Vimeo version rather than the YouTube version of these these tutorials and courses if they're on uh, Vimeo, uh, if they're on uh, YouTube, for instance, without the adverts without the adverts. So they will be able to see the full course, all the tutorials within the course, uh, without any adverts whatsoever, because they're going through a tier from How to Code Well. So, which means that we have a free tier and we have a non-free tier, essentially. Um, and then there'll be bits in between as well. Plus, I'm considering in the future, and now we're talking way past the MVP here, of purchasing a course. So instead of instead of having the subscription tier, you can also just buy a course. So in the in the user's control panel type thing, if you want the members area, if you will, you'll be able to see the courses that you've purchased and the courses that you've seen previously, if, um, you know, depending on the tier version that you're on. So if you're on a non-free tier, if it's a monthly thing, then you'll get all of the courses. However, you can just say, I want to buy that course. That's that's kind of the way uh, I, I would like it to be sort of uh, priced, I guess. And I've got to work through all the pricing and all that stuff uh, later. But that's how my head is about that. And this is really moving into the area where I really want How to Code Well to be self-sufficient, you know, in terms of the finances. Because at the moment I'm having to... I'm paying for it. I'm paying for the hosting of the podcast. I'm paying for the hosting of the Vimeo and, and obviously the servers and the domains and all of this stuff. 
you know, and, and then my time and blah, 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 blah. So I would like this to be the first sort of stepping stone, if you will, of how I can make a platform for myself for how to code well, not for me, for how to code well, a platform for how to code well, that makes how to code well um, self-sufficient. Um, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, so this is the first stage to this. This is the first stage to this. Um, okay, so we've got... Um, so we've got, the, like, as I mentioned, we've got the subscription uh, bits and pieces. So that obviously requires a payment gateway um, interaction with that. Now, the, there is also, when you're playing around with subscriptions, you've also got to deal with, um, you know, maybe, a, a, and we're, get, we're really getting into the weeds here of stuff that we're not even going to be touching on today. Um, but, but we, you know, you'll have to deal with things like, you know, bill, bills that um, sort of in uh, payments that don't succeed or payments that get declined or failed. Um, you'll also have to deal with the fact that people might want to unsubscribe unsub and, and not, you know, be a, be a member anymore. So there's loads of these kind of uh, edge cases that you need to sort of um, work through. Plus you need to have a list of all of the bills that the person has paid, you know, because perhaps this is going to go f to, um, you know, I would love this to be used in in, in sort of educational places um, where, you know, it would be a, a fee to an educational place and they would obviously require invoicing and all of this stuff. So, you know, having having previous invoices and all of this stuff. So... The payment stuff isn't going to be dealt with at all by how to code well. It's going to be dealt probably using Stripe, um, which means that there needs to be some communication between the two. And also, um, the way I'm thinking of structuring the 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 infrastructure, um, maybe doing it in microservices, what sign up kind of leans towards the need for having uh, a queuing system, such as RabbitMQ, for instance. Um, so. It's not just the front end that we're playing with at all. We're playing around with so many uh, pieces of technology. The back end is going to be um, primarily Symfony, I think. Um, Symfony APIs, um, RabbitMQ, as I've mentioned. It's going to be Dockerized. Um, and also, um, there's, other, there's other things as well that I'm going to use for the actual content itself, not the courses, not the courses, um, the actual content, such as the blog and the podcast, um, what I'm going to have is is a content management system, which is separate from the user management system or the CRM. And I'm gonna and I've chosen to do this because I don't want everything in one one basket. If the if the if uh, the content management system goes down, I still want people to be able to um, access the courses, right? Because that's, you know, that's the primary thing. That's the primary thing. But first of all, before I even get to that point, I need to have the foundation stones uh, set in place. So let's talk about the project setup. This is the first thing I want to do. So there's a bunch of how to code well uh, components that are built, that have already been built, and that I can apply to this. So let's talk about the technology for the project setup itself. Um, the front end will be in Gatsby. This is going to be a, a, a Gatsby stroke React front end. Um, and um, we're going to use the components such as the UI library, the header menu, and the footer that have already been you know, created for a, a various other How to Code Well projects. Um, I'm going to create the local project today. We're going to create it up. And then we're going to wire it up to Ghost. Um, and Ghost is a content management system that I'm playing around with. The idea, though, is that I want I want the I want this to be um, I want this to be totally agnostic to the actual API, as in I, as in the source. So if I choose one day to to switch from Ghost to something else, I can do so easily. So what I'm saying is I'm I'm not. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still discovering what I can and can't do with Ghost. Um, the stuff that I've seen, I really like. So we're gonna we're gonna continue on with Ghost, but I'm gonna make sure that the front end is built in such a way 
that uh, it doesn't care where this data is coming from. Um, and we're going to focus on the blog. We're going to focus on um, the uh, the podcast posts uh, first, and then what we're going to do because that will that will because I'm having to learn this as I go. Right, I'm having to learn the interaction between Ghost and and uh, and Gatsby. Um, so this will give me a good sort of um, learning curve, I guess, um, for these things. Um, and then, so then that's the blog. Uh, we'll then work through the blog, and the blog, I believe, has these child issues here. So create API endpoints, create a template, create pagination, and there, there'll be some more to add. If today I could just get this stuff done, and then maybe next week I can focus on the actual blog bits and pieces, um, that would be wonderful. And then after that, we'll get into uh, the user authentication. There is a lot there. Um, and then the other bits and pieces too. So that's really what I want to focus on. And yesterday, what I what what I did uh, yesterday is I actually created um, I actually created a repository for this. Um, I'm calling it Portal because I like the idea of the How to Code Well .net being a portal of various different uh, pieces of content from How to Code Well. Um, that would be that would be cool. So I'm calling this the Portal. That's the project name. Um, and also, what I did is I created the Ghost backend, and what I did is I Dockerized it. Um, so I dockerized it and I, 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 I built, um, it, by default it uses SQL Lite. I wasn't overly happy with SQL Lite, so I'm using, um, my SQL. So I, I, you know, span up those containers and this is actually running on, uh, on the web. So I've got something that I can access and play with. If I click on here, for instance, you can actually see it. This is the, 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 the ghost backend. Um, and you can see I've been playing around. This was the uh, the, pod, the recent podcast I did with um, Richard Bell, Web Development and Maple Rock Design. If I click in here, we can see that that is the, uh, the po a, a small section of the podcast, I should say. Obviously, I need to add bits and pieces to this. But I was just playing around with the difference between how can I distinguish the difference between a podcast episode and a blog because obviously as I mentioned right at the start of this I want to separate those pieces of content out in fact at the moment they go to completely different websites but I want to have a central place where I can create content um, like blog posts and and the podcast so this is the podcast episode and this is the blog and you can see that they're separated using the tag podcast and blog so at the moment this is just this is just uh, 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 the title. Uh, I was just using the titles of the the, the first page of the blog, um, just so I've got something to test. Just so when I say find me all the posts, I've got some way of filtering what is a podcast and what is a blog. So in tags, I think I've got um, podcast season three and blog. Because obviously there's going to be, there's different seasons of the podcast as well. So there's kind of like, if you think of it like a hierarchy of structure. So you've got a podcast and then in the podcast you have many seasons um, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, now another thing that I wouldn't mind sort of um, think, I, so I've got, so this, this, this roadmap is just the roadmap for the How to Code Well site, but there is, in my notebooks on pen and paper, I have roadmaps for um, various different projects that I would like to happen after this. Um, so I know on the stream that we've we've I've I've sort of hinted at electron apps, mobile apps, um, and other bits and pieces. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that this will help me to build those things, especially with the CMS and the 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 API endpoints. Um, but also what I would like to do or I would potentially, potentially like is to have guests actually write blog articles for How to Cope Well. That would be lovely. If that ever happened, that would be fantastic. Um, but obviously we need to have the system in place for this to, for this to work. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Um, okay, so let's, and that, that's, that's enough talking. <laughs> 
let's get on and write code. So we're going to uh, we're going to work through this. We're going to create the local project. That's the first thing we're going to deal with, um, and then we're going to wire it up to Ghost. And then what we're going to do um, is we're going to add the UI library, um, the the menu, the header menu, and the footer. And I think that would be awesome. And then once that's done, we can then start working through. Um, uh, creating the blog pages and the blog posts and, and other bits and pieces. So let's start. Let's start. Let's build this thing. <clears throat> he says, not doing anything. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to put some music on because I'm tired of my own voice. There we go. So, cool. Okay, so I just I've just had a look on Discord. Um, the, so the plan today today we're going to do a town hall after uh, the stream about five o'clock. So in about two hours time. Um, it's a, it's an opportunity for you guys to. Um, gals to my microphone um to talk about you know give some suggestions uh on how to code well if you've got any video suggestions if you've got any questions if you've got any comments any ways to improve then come on board um you need to be a twitch subscriber or a patreon in order to get access to the town hall it's a voice chat channel in discord uh, but that's happening about um five o'clock so we've got about two hours to play before that I'll remind everyone uh, closer to the time. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is create the project, right? That would that would help. Um, so let's go over to the terminal here. Um, let's just let's just remove that. And let's go to. Okay, so I've, I have cloned the portal. Uh, what I need to do is do an npm install. This is going to install Gatsby, and it's using the Gatsby. Um, it's using the Gatsby uh, Ghost Starter, which we're going to hack about. So we'll wait for this to go through. It's it's funky motions. I also need to create a, a dot ghost dot JSON file that has um, various bits and pieces for. I really should get around to fixing that. That's a Python issue that came up there. Um, it's one of my versions of Python is 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 not correct. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, I need a, a dot ghost dot JSON which will have the credentials for actually accessing the. Um, uh, the the ghost installation at readme uh, on on read only mode. Let's do um let's do an ls now. We should have our node modules folder which we do. Um, yeah, let's just have a look and see what's in there. Quite a ton of stuff, but that's okay. Let's clear down the screen. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over to here. I've already downloaded it. See. And it's this .ghost.json file that I need to change. This is running off of the um, the current, you know, ghost Gatsby.ghost.io. Let's see if I can get this to run um, locally first. So I'm going to do Gatsby develop. We're going to run it off of port at 1991. So uh, 
Ah oh dear, I think I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm having that safari issue as we had the other day. That's a shame. Yeah, safari has failed. I think I'm gonna just um, cut my losses and use Chrome. <laughs> I'll just I'll just get the uh, get the, the stream up and running again. There we go. So I'm gonna just um, yeah. yeah. There was a problem with with uh, that last time. It's a shame. Okay, let, I tell you what. Let's um, live life on the edge. We'll give it one more try. Okay. So, it, it doesn't work, <laughs> as in these posts should have content in, uh, which is weird, that's, just, that's missing stuff, missing stuff. Let's try it with the credentials though, of, um, of the How To Code Well uh, development. The, the, the how to code well development um, site. Get rid of that. That's a duplication. Okay. Nope. I may have to rebuild the site. There we go. So, as you can see, we can we've got the um, the blog articles here. Now, I have played with I was playing around with this last night, so so I kind of knew it was going to work. Um, notice that we have our blog articles here, and we don't have the podcast articles. This is because I've already hacked around with the um, the GraphQL um, to only show uh, blog articles and not podcast articles. Let me just demonstrate you that now. So in Let's come out of that in um, public SRC. Da -da 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 -da. We want to go to. Uh, no, we don't. We want to go to here. So we have um, get all posts where the name with a tag must match blog. <laughs> so we've added that in. Um, as a as a check, and I think I've also did this to the actual pages themselves. If I went to S pages, not pages, sorry. No, 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 no. Templates. Uh, post. Scroll to the bottom. Is it post? Is it? Hang on. It's in index isn't it there we go <laughs> filter um, blog so if I change that to podcast we'll get only the podcast um, articles um, which is which is cool which is good which is what we'll need for the for the next when we get to the working on the podcast stuff um, okay so I'm going to deem this project uh, create local project I'm gonna say that that is done so let's go over to um, the board we'll put in the stuff that I want to do today so how to code well uh, library the menu and the footer um, and what was the one that I did I think it was right at the bottom wire up to ghost local project oh, local project okay Okay, so the create local project is done. Woohoo! <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add the How to Code Well UI library. Um, now, this UI library is based on um, a GitHub repository. So, first of all, so what I should mention is that this 
the portal is in is not in GitHub. It's not public, um, but these components are. So that's the how to code well UI library, and we can install that through npm. So we'll just come out of that, um, and we will install the UI library. I'm gonna need to fix this. This is this is Python. It doesn't actually f cause the thing to break, but um, <laughs> it's just it's just my machine. Okay, so that's gone through. Uh, we won't worry about that today. So that's installed, but I need to actually get it running, right? Um, because that's now in in here. Should be how to code well UI library, uh, but we actually need to. Uh, adjust it and make it work. Um, I'm also going to, at the same time, I'm also going to do the header menu. And I'm also going to do the footer as well. Might as well get them all done. Oh, another thing I have... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Another thing that I have done is wired up to ghost. There we go. That can. That's done. And I'll put in the footer. Ah. Uh, so, last uh, week on Friday, I went to the gym after work, and I went a little bit crazy on the rowing machine, and my hip flexor. Hip flex, is it hip flexor? Whatever that is, thing, the muscle, your joints, or not the joint, is it tendons or something? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's very tight. <laughs> so if you see me limping around, it's because of that. Where did the music go? The music stopped. That's not good. Too many windows open. I have far too many windows open. Huh. Has the internet just dropped? <laughs> oh dear, I think the internet may have just failed. Oh, that sucks. If that's the case, let me um, mm, let me refresh this page. Oh no, okay, that's good. We're still on. Okay, it must have just been um, Chrome. <laughs> I'm having a bad day with my browsers today. Having a bad day with my browsers. Okay, so that's they're, they're installed now. The footer, the header, and the UI library. So now I actually need to do something about that. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do is, if I go to, sorry about that, if I go to um, uh, a previous website, let's do do the code of conduct, code of, oh, code, yeah, code of conduct, how to go well dot net. Um, so the header menu is this, header menu, uh, the footer menu is that, <laughs> um, and the UI library um uh, adds Tailwind and other bits and pieces to to it. It means that I can have a consistent um, a, a consistent look and feel across the How to Code Well products. Um, it was kind of like what I needed to do in order to um, to make subdomains all kind of look follow a, a similar style guide. So, with that being said, I'm going to open up. Um, why is, let's just remove that, because that's going to take, that's going to, there we go. <laughs> Something's going on with my machine. It's, uh, it's not, uh, <laughs> not playing ball. Let's see if I can get the tunes back up. Bear with me just a sec.
two seconds. It's funny how the how things slow down when you're starting to use all sorts of processing power such as, you know, music and and everything. There we go. <laughs> Get there in the end. Sorry about that. Okay, so. <laughs> Silly me. Right. So they're installed. I'm going to open up. Um, I'll bring this over here just a moment. And I'm going to open up. Another window which has the, uh, the this um, code of conduct in it. Essentially, what I need to do is port some code across. Code of conduct. Here we go. And a new window. Okay. So. Um, I believe I believe what I need to do is in um, components in layout I need to do something similar to here because in here we're we are um, pulling down um, where hang on a minute this isn't right layout header header from header header from header no that's not correct does this have, where's my node.js, my node modules folder, there we go. We should in here have the how to code well stuff. Scroll, 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 a little bit further, E, F, G, H, no. Okay, maybe this project doesn't have it in. Let's go to the uh, package.json. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Okay, two seconds. <laughs> File, hop on. Da, 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 da. Code. About the code challenges. I'm pretty sure this one will have it. Yeah, here we go. So, if I go to components, if I go to layout, we should scroll to the top on imports. Yeah, here we go. We're importing the header menu and the footer menu. And the header menu gets placed like this. Um, inside the the page container. So if I go to layout.css, that runs global.css, global.css is in here, 
this deals with the themes, there we go, and then we've got some overrides. That's what I need to do. This is what I need to do in the, in fact, what I think I should do is actually document this. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think I will create a task for that. I won't do it now because um, document the adding of um, HTC how to code well components. Oops, um, I thought. go let's just put in some notes here so header header menu footer menu well we could do this as a list can we and UI lib hello coders hello <laughs> hello Ah, too many windows open. <laughs> Twitch, stop changing my PW has just followed me. <laughs> Hello, hope you're well. That's an interesting username you have there. Okay, so I've added that in. Uh, I'll get to that at some point. It's, it, you know, it's it's not the MVP, but it would be nice to document this process because because uh, there's a there's a lot of wiring Hello, coders. that I have to do. Hello, David Dance. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Hope you're having a good weekend, David. Hope you're having a good weekend. Thumbs up for Ghost. It's working out quite well right now. So. What I need to do is, uh, <laughs> I need to do so much stuff um, to get this, to get, to get this uh, menu stuff in, uh, which is a sh shame. I thought it would have been slightly easier, but I need to basically copy the Code Challenges site. Um, the Code Challenges site itself is... So if you don't know, um, every um, every month we have a challenge. Um, and this month is the, uh, the, the, the challenge that c converts a JSON file um, into form, well, this JSON file has form configuration, um, which will then produce on level two a form from the configuration file. Um, and then there is, uh, you, you need to then submit that form and handle it via PHP. And then, base, looking back on this now, it's very cruel of me to do this, but the, the last level is to then convert the values that you've supplied, submitted in the form to XML and have an XML file per per page. Now I'm going to be reviewing these next week on next Sunday, on the next Sunday stream. Um, but uh, as I've just demonstrated, this is the menu. Down here is the footer. This is These are the, the components that we need. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you wanna if you wanna check out that uh, challenge, then it's at codingchallenges.howtocodewell.net, um, and I'll be reviewing it, reviewing your challenges live on Twitch next Sunday, and then I'll be creating a YouTube video from it. Ah. So. <laughs> yeah, just reading the comments. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. I managed the other day to get um, Ghost to um, to 
distinguish between posts and blogs, blog posts and articles and stuff like that, and then um, uh, tinker with the Gatsby to pull out those particular tags in a certain order, um, which is cool. There are there are um, questions that I've got regarding um, bits of parameters that I could perhaps um, push through, but um, I will I'll hook you up on that. I think David, if that's all right, because um, uh, yeah yeah I got a got a couple of questions, got a got a couple of questions, but I think it's probably because I've come from. Um, uh, WordPress rather than just going, you know, ghost completely. Um, so there's stuff in there that uh, I, I'm, I'm sure there are ways around these th these things, but uh, I haven't quite worked it out yet. So, yeah, cool, awesome. All right, so let's get these let's get these um, React components in play, shall we? Into this uh, this front end. Um, okay, so with the Code Challenges site, we have this header. Um, no, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. We have. Hang on, let's work, work through it. We've got layout, which has the header menu, which needs the page container. Right, gotcha. So let's let's put that in first. So we need to copy these two, and I find my code again. It's over here. And in components, common, we have layout. Now, why hasn't that found those two? Well, it's dark because I haven't used it yet. It's running the helmet, and then here we have the viewport. So I think I might have to wrap this in my own site nav, site foot, site main, that's cool. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing, David. I, I, that's what I'm thinking, you know. I, I, I've purposely done this in a way that is headless because um, I, I, I don't want to be dictated to by however I create the content. I, I want it to be more organic generic if that makes sense because in the future what I would like is is to not only have this website but other things as well I mentioned the electron stuff and um, also uh, the, the mobile app stuff as well which I would hope th would get the content from this content management system whatever it is um, but I don't want to be forced down any kind of you know field name routes or anything like that property names so, um, I should say, everybody who's joined, um, David Darns, uh, I interviewed, um, I'll try and find the, try and find the episode. Bear with me just a sec. In season two. So many. Here we go. Uh, episode 35. Go check this out. If you want to learn about uh, ghosts, then uh, this is an interview between me and David um, about ghosts. Wow, that was in August. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Go check it out. It, it, very interesting. So, and then come back here, obviously. <laughs> Time does fly. It's, it's nuts. All right. Let's grab the header container, header menu, and plomp it in, shall we? Plomp it in. That's my new word. Plomp. Plomp. I'm thinking I'm going to put it here. Um, cool, that's wired up. I'm probably going to have to play around with 
how these classes fit, I think, and slot together. And I'll probably need to remove the helmet or at least adjust it to, to my own. But anyway, let's put that in there and also let's um, deal with that CSS because it's not going to do anything without that. So with the, with the CSS, um, we import from layouts. Um, let's, let's see, I'm sure there is this happening already, so let's just double check what's going on. Up here, we are importing from styles and app.css. I'm going to hack that, boom. So that's now going to layout.css rather than, I tell you what, I probably need to, let's just um, comment that out. Layout.css, so that's going to go uh, back two levels into styles and into app.css. That's what we're importing here. Cool, groovy. Okay, so I'm going to break everything. This is what I'm going to do today, break everything. <laughs> um, so that's going to layout.css, which is here. And then that's that's importing from CSS Global. I, th 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 what, a, what a waste of time. I don't need to do that. That's stupid. What was I drinking? Um, that's what we want. We want the uh, theme packs. What was I drinking? That's the same one. Oh no, that's icons and then themes. I thought that was the same. My eyes. I need to get my eyes tested. I'm going to copy that. <laughs> Let's go over to the project itself. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. So, I think what I'm going to do is actually follow this convention where we go into styles. I think that's probably better than having it within the components themselves. I get the whole idea of having... <laughs> yeah. Um, I get, I get, I get having CSS close to the, because this is the way you would do it in Gatsby normally, as in, in their starter pack, is that you would have the, uh, the JavaScript very close to the actual file of the CSS. But I actually like this, having it separately as styles. I'm going to call this, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, new file in here. We're going to call this layout.css. This can all change, you know, eventually. And I'm going to bung that in. Um, I'll probably need to deal with this. But what I could do is I, I could import it in, couldn't I? <laughs> I could import it in sort of if needed. It will fall apart. It will look hor horrible, I'm sure. So in uh, layout.js, what we need to do is we need to go back two levels and go to layout.css. There we go. So we've cancelled that out. I'm not going to worry about the footer menu yet. I'm going to just comment that out. Um, let's get this uh, this thing running. We're not using Bash. Thank you. Thank you. Getting confused with my programming languages. Um, okay, so we we put that in. So let's go and run. Um, let's go and run it. So we're going to do uh, Gatsby develop off of port 1991. Okay, can't resolve the uh, that issue here. Generating development JavaScript bundle. Something's wrong with the path. Let's take a look. Oh yes, I'm missing styles. Silly me. Of course I'm missing styles. It's my style. Let's just build it from scratch. Looking good. No errors so far. Awesome. I'll show you graph uh, QL in just a second with the new bits and pieces that I put put into play. Um, with the podcast stuff. I'll show you that in just a sec. Let's comment. Let's uh, grab that. Oh, I've already got it running here. Okay. <laughs> it's huge. 
Yes, because I'm not using the app uh, stuff. But do I have the menu in here? That's what I'm interested in. Do I actually have the menu? There we go. Can you see that? That's the menu. Right. Okay. Let's tidy this up. Um, import icons. Fine. I think what I need to do first of all is change or add a class into here. Let's remove the helmet. Let's put this in as page container. So page container is from here, which is in the uh, uh, the, the base theme. Ah, yes, I'm forgetting Tailwind, of course. I need to I need to put that in play. Base.css. Okay, cool. Let's get rid of um, layout.css. What am I? I want to remove that and I want to remove the nav here because the nav's already in play. I want to remove this and I want to remove those as well. And what's that? That's the site mask left. Yeah, I want to remove that too. So that goes up to this level and that level. I need to remove the container. Site head, site URL, background image. That can go the header section on the top of the screen. Thank you viewport top that can go that whole thing can go however we've got children hmm let me let me think let me go back over to the um, the code challenges site let's go to components layout.js how's that set up I'm wondering if I could just get away with copying that. I reckon I could. We'll give it a go. There's always the control Z. <laughs> if it all fails, so we don't need the helmet. Uh, we don't need these. I don't think so. Definitely need children. Um, that's the footer thing. Let's put that in. Let's remove that for a minute. Okay, that's the edit thing for the footer. Gotcha. Okay, we can remove that. Is, no, let's remove that because it's not actually in GitHub, so that's fine. Um, let's fix those, put those in double quotes, and put those in double quotes too. We don't need data.
that's interesting. We're not actually using data here. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Let's save that. So we've still got the bits and pieces running, which is good. You know, the actual things. This is the footer menu now. And then up here is the is the this. I believe what, what I'm missing is the Tailwind configuration because the Tailwind configuration has the background colors. That's probably what I'm missing. So if I go over to here, yeah, we've got tailwind.config on that. Um, and uh, Tailwind, I believe, is added through the package.json. This is the Code Challenges site, by the way. So if we go to package.json here, um, we should have in dev dependencies, Tailwind um, uh, CSS, which we do. And this is configured through the tailwind.config file. Tailwind config file has the how to code well background image as well. So I think that's what we need to make it, you know, um, get the shapes, <laughs> get the shapes right. So we'll add Tailwind. Now, there's a couple of things I need to play with, especially with the plugins, don't I? So if I, well, we need the post CSS in play, but we need, um, uh, where was it? It's, is it in, it's not in there. It's in config, of course it is. Here we go. Scroll up to the top. We've got plugin, uh, post CSS plugin. That's what we need. Okay, all right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install Tailwind. Uh, that's the first thing I think I'm gonna do. Um, and I can't remember for the life of me the way that works in NPM. Um, That's BJS. Tailwind. Here we go. NPM save, and then you do that's it. NPX in it, and then we do um, the the post. Yeah, I re yeah. There is a, an order to the madness. <laughs> so we'll copy that. It's not madness. It actually makes a lot of sense. So at five o'clock today, uh, we're going to have a town hall meeting um, between uh, the pro users, well, aka the Twitch subscribers and the Patreons on Discord. So if you've got any suggestions, if you want to talk about any um, any improvements for how to code well, any if you've got any ideas of um, of video content that you would like me to, to, to do, then do join come on board it's at five o'clock today in a couple of in an hour yeah hour and 15 um we hold a town hall meeting every month um okay so that's that's now installed don't worry about that i will at some point in my life <laughs> sort out this this python issue that i have on this machine uh dear I think this. I think that was a. That, I think this is a uh, due to an uh, invalid version of Python that I have running in, against MacBots. Um, it doesn't actually interfere with. It doesn't actually break the. Um, uh, the downloading. It's a pretty much a warning, basically. Okay, so generate the Tailwind uh, config file, and I'm hoping what I could do is just copy over the the other one. But what we'll do is we'll run this npx tailwind .init. Boom. Um, and then we will install the Gatsby post, uh, post CSS NUS. God, my, 
back is killing me. Mm. I swear exercise is bad for you sometimes. <laughs> or, or perhaps I've just overdone it. <laughs> it's probably that. I can never do things, you know, uh, subtly. So include your plugin in uh, in the Gatsby uh, config JS. So it is that. Um, now obviously there's other plugins, so we need to just copy this section here within the back ticks. Um, so in uh, config, which I'm in here, you can see all the plugins that are are currently in here. Oh, I'm in the code challenges site. It would help if I'm on the right project, wouldn't it? That would be so helpful. So in um, the config, scroll, scroll, scroll to the top. We've got plugins here. Um, I just want to make sure that it's currently not or a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's not installed. Um, now, am I am I right to remember that there is a certain order to this? Or am I thinking of something totally different? I think I might be thinking of something different. I've been playing around with um, in my freelance stuff. I've been playing around with uh, last week was Vue, JS, uh, React. I did a bit of and jQuery. So. <laughs> Um, what's uh, what's up with those divs? What's up with those divs? There isn't many divs. Are you talking about the layout here? It's all right. <laughs> you poking fun at my divs. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> uh, so I need to play with the config here, don't I? I need to put that in. I'm going to put it here. What's um, XDD? XDDD? I know domain-driven de design, but what's the X in front of it? Um, okay, and then we need to create the postcss.json uh, file, which I'm hoping I can just take from uh, here. So if this is the uh, code challenger site, this one here. Let's just, can I copy that whole file and paste it in? to the other projects. Uh, paste. Yes, please. Yes, add it. Okay. So tailwind.conf, tailwind.conf.js is the, is the thing. And we also need to have the tailwind conf uh, bits and pieces. I'll just copy that, I think. There it is. Um, why are why is this coming up with a load of errors here? Is it because my settings are not correct? I think it is on these projects because that's fine. I think it's because this hasn't turned into um, you know uh, JSX mode in PHP Storm. Anyway. So that's the tailwind.conf. Uh, post CSS is running that um, as well. And then config has the post CSS in the plugins. So that's done. Let's see if I can build this again. Oh, fair enough. You were laughing. Ha <laughs> ha. It's good to laugh. Um, okay, I'm gonna do a 
No, I'm not. It's, uh... Gatsby... Develop again. Ow. Yeah, I think you're right, Tyranid. I think I do need to get a, um... yoga or something going on. Okay, let's refresh that screen. Boom! There we go. So now we've got the menu. Oh, the nice shiny menu. Look at that. Scroll, scroll, scroll to the... Oh, I've clicked. <laughs> Click to the bottom here. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> um, and then and then this is a footer. Um... Yes, of course you can, uh, Wackos. Yes, of course you can. So, um, this, I'm, st I'm stood up here. I don't know why I'm moving around, but yeah, I'm stood up here. Um, so this is a standing desk, and this, that you can't actually see. Hold on. Let me... <laughs> Just for you, Wackos. <laughs> I will press the, I'll press the, uh, I'll press the button. going down so now I need to reduce the size <laughs> there we go Ugh. so there we go I'm now sat uh, I'm sat on a Herman Miller chair which you can see probably better now <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it is a. An a is that how you pronounce it? Arion, 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 Arion. Yes. Ah, <sighs> it's probably best to be sat down. To be honest, um, I've been stood up for such a long time. So yes, this is good. We have the this uh, header now. And we have the links, and if we scroll down, we have the footer, which is all nice and shiny, which is good. Don't worry, Wackos, that's a, that's a... My back is killing me, so it's probably good to just sit down, as long as I don't slump. Of course, I haven't checked the lighting yet when I'm sat down, so I don't know... Um, so, this table is okay. Um, however, it's chipping, right? It's the, the paintwork. So the whole mechanics of it is fantastic. I love it. But it, it's the, the table, the paintwork on the table is just chipping, um, which is a shame. I'm thinking of just covering it full of stickers, full of conference stickers or, you know, whatever stickers. Um, because it is getting really chipped. What's happening, you see, is that my microphone, I have it on the ground. It's a proper um, sort of a singing microphone stand, if you will. And it it's not on the desk, because if it was on the desk, then um, you would get vibrations and stuff from it. So it's stood on the ground on a tripod type thing. But it bangs on the, on the desk. And every time it bangs on the desk, it... Um, Chips, which sucks. Um, David Darns, you've done the sticker thing we did. Yes, can you send me a photograph of that, please? That would be amazing. Send it over uh, Twitter or however you want to do it. Just take a photo of your desk. Because <coughs> I, I want to see what it looks like before I do it, if that makes sense. <laughs> I also want to get an idea of how many stickers I'll need. Because this, this desk is pretty big. You know, <laughs> um, I was interviewing um, Adam uh, Adam Argyle from Google. Oh, I'm just checking my phone. Uh, the other day, um, last year, and he has stickers on his um, microphone, which I thought was awesome. So yeah, I think I need to be a little less sterile and a, and a little bit more crazy with stickers. I've got so many stickers for from conferences and stuff. 
Talking about stickers, I need to get stickers for How to Code Well. <laughs> That's what I do need to do. Um, it's still on the list of things to go through. So this is uh, this is looking good. Well, it's not looking good, but this is this is this is the stuff from uh, wherever that roadmap's disappeared to. The three in progress. So we've done the the uh, the How to Code Well UI library. That's done. Boom. The header menu is in. Boom. And the footer menu. Cha-ching. Awesome. <laughs> I think I'll drink to that. So let's go back to the roadmap. The project setup is done. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So in in, in the, the, the lovely world of web development, that would be classed as a, uh, um, well, yeah, I suppose you would class it as a, a, a version, a release, right? To, a, to, to um, uh, staging, right? Because you've just done that milestone. You've just done that, if you would like to call it a sprint or what have you, it's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna commit these changes and I want to try and get into this sort of habit of when I complete a portion of work from here I commit this to the, uh, the either the epic number um, if we clicked on the epic number here is um, how to code well uh, P so P standing for portal uh, 38 um, but there's gonna be some real tasty um, tasty uh, uh, challenges throughout all of this so I might have to just do it excuse me per per task so anyway um, I, what I want to do is I want to do uh, complete uh, uh, yeah completes hashtag uh, hey TCW, how to code well, portal 38. 38, hello not 48. Coders. 38, 38, 38. 38. Um, hello, dad YCJ underscore. Awesome username. <laughs> Thank you for following. I hope you've had a great day. Hello. Can I can I do this in this view? Yes, hello. Woohoo. Hello. <coughs> hope you've had a great weekend having a great weekend thank you for joining does anybody mind if I change the music because I think I've heard this about a million times and I'm going to go nuts <laughs> um, I'll do it after I, I commit this code let's work on one thing at one time um, okay so I'm gonna add the tailwind.conf and we're not gonna add the Jason um, the ghost um, bits and pieces because this will eventually, it doesn't have it now, but this will eventually have the production bits and pieces. And so what I want to do is probably ignore that file and just put it on the on the server um, and see if I can deal with that and perhaps environment variables, that would be handy. Uh, okay, so let's do this um, as like a list. So we added, um, header menu and I'm going to find the that's how to code well to H, uh, HTCWP2 this might seem a little bit bizarre I mean why are you doing all of this I want to try and get in the habit of having a some sort of documentation and commit history as to as to this is this a people blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> wakos is saying is this a public repository um so no and yes no because um the how to code well.net is in is in a different is in a private repository yes because the actual components that i'm using here the, the header menu the footer menu uh the ui library they're in github um so kind of yes and no um, the idea is that 
eventually, uh, the grand scheme of things, I want to have not just this website, but other parts of the How to Code Well, how to, how to code well platform, such as um, on a desktop app. I want to build a, a couple of mobile apps, and I want them to use the same components or similar components configured slightly differently, perhaps. And I'll have those open sourced, but then the putting everything together will be closed. That was a bit of a long-winded answer, wasn't it? Uh, DaddyYC underscore J, or J underscore, um, morning, just got up and got some coffee before I commence today's to-dos. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Documentation is everything. Yes. As I keep telling my clients, <laughs> documentation is everything. So anyway, add uh, added header menu, how to code well to, and added footer menu. Um, uh, the footer menu is how to code well three. What else? Um, this will also get me into the habit of if there is a task that is too big, then I, it would force me to split it off into smaller tasks as well. Um, well, that's the plan anyway. So we also did the local project. That's uh, how to code well 72. and wire up ghost now uh, whilst before I forget uh, 73 I will also create how to code what a task for deployment 73 okay commit that thank you very much David thank you very much I'll check that out do appreciate that you know what will happen I'll take it to the extreme and just cover everything the whole room in stickers <laughs> That'd be cool. I'll just come on with stickers all over my face. Right, so that's being pushed, um, which is cool. That's gone up, and that is done. So let's let's look at the other tasks, shall we? Blog page. So um, create a blog page and post of pages, or. or or post pages. Um, so this requires API endpoints, um, a template, and pagination. Now, the API endpoint is actually done because we're using Ghost. Um, uh, because we're actually getting the the, uh, the the post back. However, what I do want to do is I want the posts. So that's Ghost. Here we go. I want to have this homepage to be a different homepage. I don't want it to have all of the blog posts on here. Um, and what I would like to do is have the blog page itself be this. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is on here, I'm going to add another task. We're going to call this remove blog posts from home page okay um, and then what do we what else do we need to do so this is this is essentially will be blank um, we want to create the blog itself if I was to click on that where does it go how to code well.net okay so I do need to change hack that up somewhat um, oh no yeah. I did think of that Okay. Oh, the music has changed. I haven't done anything. Create. Um, so we want to add 
No, we don't. We want a link blog in header menu to blog page. Um, okay, call. Wonderful. Would everybody mind if I just popped down and got myself another cup of tea? Because my, my tea is cold and I think it would be nice to start this section on a fresh cup of tea. <laughs> so I will speak to you all in a few moments. Oh, Tyranids asked, did I already set up the Docker stuff? Yeah, did that the, uh, yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. So um, this site here, this is Dockerized. Um, this is this is actually on the net, um, how to code well .net, uh, off running off of a port, and it's Dockerized, and it's not using SQL Lite, it's using MySQL, and MySQL is, is also in a Docker container too. Um, so that's done. That is done. That's done. Right, I'm gonna just pop down, grab a um, a. Uh, cup of tea and I will be back very very shortly speak to you shortly
Hello. Let's get on to that screen. No, that's the wrong screen. <laughs> that screen. <laughs> Just saw the desk, David. Looks awesome, mate. <laughs> Looks awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Hey, Beach Gus. Whoa. Ah, I'm not used to streaming sat down. It's very weird. I feel very small. <laughs> um, okay, so before I left, um, yes, I was away to get a cup of tea. Um, you know, thing tea helps helps the brain cells. <laughs> helps me think. It's the caffeine. Uh, and that, and, uh, and I'm English, <laughs> so everything evolves around a cup of tea. <laughs> so Tyranid asked before I uh, before I went down to uh, grab my tea um, about uh, the setup with Docker and stuff like that. So I, what I think I'm going to do is just talk about that a little bit before I jump into more of the code. So yes, Gatsby is. Um, the ghost, sorry, not Gatsby. Ghost is running in a Docker container um, with MySQL in a Docker container networked together. Uh, so that's now out in the in the wild, <laughs> um, uh, which is good. And the actual um, uh, Gatsby itself isn't running in a Docker container because there's no need to. It's a static site, so that's just running off of an nginx uh, configuration. Um, and in fact, what I haven't done yet, I, because I did, I did all that committing and pushing and stuff like that, is I haven't actually published this. Uh, we have the domain alpha.howtocowell.net, um, which is going to be the staging. So I think what I could do is I could bung it there. Um, I say bung it there, throw it over the fence. Um, I'll do that probably after the, at the end of the stream, because one thing I want to do is I want to... Uh, create a task here. And I'm not sure if it's, an, I, uh, it's not really an epic, is it? Um, I want to create a task as I'm thinking of it, um, which is create a deployment script. Um, so, and this also brings me on to a nice little point about why I'm not using Netlify um, for this. I could use Netlify. However, I want this to this this version of this website to be um, uh, sort of like a, on a subdomain whilst it gets built and developed. And I want that subdomain to be password protected. And you can do that with Netlify. However, it costs you, I think it was $45 a month. <laughs> so so um, because I don't use Netlify for all my things, um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't go down that route. Um, however, I must say, I mean, I'm not sponsored by Netlify, um, but I'm, I must say that it is a fantastic way of, 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 uh, hosting a, a static site, which means that I need to, to use something else if, if I wanted it to be password protected. And, um, that is why I pushed it on to another VPS. Um, using nginx um, and uh, yeah now the the trick key part in all of this something that Netlify does do well is um, automatic builds so when so what you can do is you can write in ghost a build trigger that will trigger Netlify to build when a post has been uh, published and changed and saved so it will fire off a webhook um, to to run a build. So because I'm not using Netlify, I need to come up with a way, a strategy of doing that myself. Um, once this site is now, once the site does go live and it does alpha dot how to code well dot net replaces how to code well dot net, then I can consider using other ways, alternatives to run the deployment. So I'm gonna just. I'm just going to bung this in there just as a reminder that I need some sort of deployment script. 
but there you go. Oh, cool. So uh, David's got some stickers from Sketch and Smashing Mag. Nice. I've, I've now got sticker envy, David. <laughs> now I've got sticker David, uh, envy. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the, the, the roadmap. <laughs> we finished project setup. In about 45 minutes time, I'm going to be doing the town hall on Discord. Um, so we've got about 45 minutes to play. Um, <coughs> yes, that's correct. Um, something like that with the um, with Bitbucket. There's there's various different um, mechanisms that I could use. Ooh, see, this is something that I'm gonna have to. Um, yeah, we, we, David, you and I, we need to talk. Um, done some deployments with Ghost with webhooks um, and an, a small node server which listens to webhooks and runs a build. Yeah, if I could get something like that set up, that would be fan dabby dozy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, I haven't used GitLab a lot. I used it the other week for a client site, but um, yeah, I suppose I could use GitLab. Definitely, thank you, David. That would be amazing. That would be awesome. So far, what I've got is just a, 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 a Nginx running off of a VPS, and I would have to SSH into that and then run a run a build. Um, so if there was some way I could open up some sort of, um, yeah, right. <laughs> if I, if there was some, I mean, I only set it up yesterday. <laughs> um, so yeah, if there was some way I could ha get, get a webhook to listen to it, that would be, that would be very, good, very, very good. Cool. That would be cool. Um, I think what I'm going to do is on the board. In the deployment script, uh, I'm going to add a note in here about uh, webhooks. Uh, requires webhooks for build. Cool. Okay, so let's go back to the actual site, the site itself. That's Ghost. Ghost in dark mode, by the way, is 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 looks so good. <laughs> dark mode, all the things. I say, definitely. Um, and then I go to this site, <laughs> and it's white. Um, so I want to remove the, this stuff from um, the homepage, definitely, and I want to have my own blog page with all this stuff on it. That's essentially what I want to achieve. Um, <coughs> So, let's go back to the code. Essentially, essentially, what I need to do is I need to create a, a, a blog page that mimics the index page, essentially, and then remove everything from the index page. This is the index page here, um, and it's going through each of the posts, creating a postcard. Huh. Postcard, nice. And a postcard will have the bits and pieces I suppose for the post so we'll get into the meat of this I, I, I guess um, maybe in a future stream where I'm changing the classes and stuff um, and then okay so the index page itself is that so I guessing if I was to create a page for a blog and pages here we got just the 401 for 404 sorry mm -mm 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 -mm. Ah, something I can also demonstrate, actually, is, um, uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, didn't I, GraphQL. So this is GraphQL. Um, <clears throat> I'm not 
not sure if you can see that correctly. Can I increase the size of it? There we go. So this is um, this is all of the uh, queries that I can make, all, all of the 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 things I can query, um, and this is running it off of the the Ghost backend. So, for example, here I can do um, a Ghost post, and let's say for for instance I want to get the um, the title of the posts um, and let's say I want to get the um, the, slur, the tags right so let's do tags uh, with the name and then I would run this and there you go you see all of the um, the output here in 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 the, the nice JSON format. So we've got the title here: Web Development at Maple Rock Design. That was the um, uh, yesterday's podcast. As you can see, the tag is in podcast there. Whereas these things here are the um, the the actual blog posts, which means that I can change I can I can change the I can add a filter to this. I can say I only want to 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 return um, posts that are um, that have the tag of blog, right? So this is how I've done it. So in the filter, I can do. Uh, I'm looking for tags. Um, element match, and then we want to do name, and we want to equal that to be blog. Like so, which means now that now if this works, this will this will mean that um, this post will not be in the return. So this is the this is how it looks in um, in the GraphQL query. Let's just move uh, move that way a little bit. Can I break that over there? So there we go. So we got filter tags element match. Um, let's can I remove no <laughs> element match and then in here we have the name that's the field that you want to match EQ which we want to equal blog. So let's run this. And we can see that we have all of the articles that are just tagged with blog. If I was to change this to be podcast, of course, then we will get all of the podcast. Boom. Well, I say all of the podcast, th th just the one I added to Ghost last night. <laughs> um, and again, you can see that there is a tag here uh, for season three, which means that I can now tag with season two um, and season one um, if I was to ever... Um, bring that back from the dead, um, season one stuff, and then and then that's how I would generate my queries to then pull the relevant bits and pieces out from uh, from Ghost. So to show you how this looks from the wonderful world of Ghost here, we've got the podcast tag there, and we've got the blog tags down here. So if I was to change this to have um, the tag of podcast as well and then come out of that hit save publish all good things go into um, uh, graph uh, graph ql graph ql and then i'll run this one we have uh oh sorry so it must equal that i need to also equal blog as well um, we get all the blog bits and pieces. What was the one I just did there? Bear with me a second. Acceptance testing. Ah, no, Safari has crashed. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Safari has crashed. Ah, right the way through a demo. <laughs> Uh, Marco, uh, whilst this uh, decides to think <laughs> what it's doing, is probably why it didn't come back with GraphQL. Um, <laughs> whilst it tries to work out the spinning beach ball of doom here, um, Marco8137 has said, has asked, uh, what am I working on, GraphQL or a website? Both. <laughs> Both. <coughs> so the, the data, I'm going to have to close this now. This is... This is ridiculous. 
I'm going to have to qu quit that. So, um, I, it probably didn't save, unfortunately. No, I don't think it did. So yeah, the uh, I'm using no go coders. I'm using Ghost as a means of um, I'm using Ghost as a means of a content management system, and I'm using um, GraphQL to then um, uh, c uh, call upon the CMS Ghost to pull down various um, podcasts and pages and posts and other wonderful bits and pieces that I'm going to put on this website. And the website here that I'm building is uh, the well eventually be the replacement of howtocodewell.net um, and it will it's going to be using ghost as a means of uh, storing that data and graphql as a means of querying that data as Tiran has just mentioned uh, hello blazo are up thank you very much for following I do appreciate it thank you my tea is getting cold that's that's not gonna happen is it that's not that's not right mm. yeah it's it's going all right so far. It's the first time I've used um, uh, a, a ghost, and ghost seems to be be um, doing all right. Um, I'm, however, I, th I I always seem to have problems with the editor of Ghost and Safari. It seems to crash it, so I'm I'm not gonna play around with that. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there. As you can see, it didn't save. Um, that acceptance test uh, post is just in blog. So I may have to um, deal with this in Chrome, I think, but I won't demonstrate that anymore because it will it will uh, bugger up. But uh, yeah, Safari, eesh. I don't know what's wrong with Safari recently. It just seems to be crashing left, right, and center. Um, hey, Blasio is from Austin, Texas. Um, uh, Ghost is not, um, uh, no, no, I don't believe it is in Python. Um, no. <coughs> uh, it's a Node.js, that's it. Um, the version of Ghost, I was running off of, uh, version three, I believe. Let me see if I can grab that up, actually. Um, I've got it running on the laptop here. I haven't actually pulled it down from... I think it's version three. I'm using the, let me see. Du -du 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 -du. Running off of the laptop now. So we go into, uh, I've called it portal backend. And it is, the Docker Compose is running, oh no, beg your pardon, it's running ghost uh, tag of Alpine. Yeah. Where's my music gone? <laughs> my music's gone as well. Have I just finished all of that? Um, I couldn't have finished that playlist already. Nuts. Yeah. Oh well, never mind. Let's get back to the code. <laughs> So, okay, we want what we want to do is we want to remove the um, we want to remove the index page. We want to just have it blank for them for now, and we want to have a blog page. That's what we want to do essentially. Um, so, I'm not sure whether to create a blog template. It is a template, I guess. Um, Yeah, it would be a template, I guess. Uh, and that, that would essentially be the index.js and have a blank index.js. That might work. Oh, sorry, um, David. Let me just double check that. So, if I can find it again. Here we go. Um, how do I get to it? How do I get to it? Is it is the version number in in the actual ghost site? Uh, about ghost version uh, 3.3.0 is the uh, is the version 
Yeah, that is the current version. Groovy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to start hacking around with this, I think. Yeah, main index page, home page. So this is the uh, Ghost Gatsby starter that I'm hacking around with. So I'm going to create a template in here. We're going to call this um, uh, blog, I think. And I think what I'm going to do is copy index. And we're going to call this blog. And I guess eventually we'll have one for podcast and basically all the other um, pages themselves. Unless, unless I class it as a page in Ghost. Hmm. That's an interesting thought. So, do I want to do that? Probably not because then I would be relying on the data in Ghost to then come back. I think what I'll do is, I think, yeah, I think I'll just follow, I think I'll just follow on as to what I'm doing here. So with the index page, what we want to do is we essentially just want to remove, um, well, essentially everything, to be honest, because I haven't decided yet on the design of the index page. I've called this portal. This is the internal, um, uh, Um, this is the internal um, code name, I guess, for this project portal. Um, the home the home page is going to be a sort of a, a sp splice together um, amount of content based on the podcast and the and the blog itself and the courses. Um, Tyranid's asking, um, how am I going to password protect all the stuff? Um, how do you mean password protect all the stuff? Um, uh, well, the, the website itself at the moment is using basic auth. Um, the APIs I'm going to be using um, probably OAuth 2. Um, and obviously using running off of HTTPS. Uh, I'm going to then have probably an API gateway um, between the API endpoints themselves. Um, in terms of the um, the customers, though, the, for the courses and the logins and all of this stuff. Um, now, I did. I have been looking at uh, at uh, Auth Zero, as Blaz Blazorop has has mentioned. However, I'm I'm not entirely sure that's the best solution for what I need. Um, I, that that area is something that I'm going to have to work on. Essentially, what I the thing is. The challenge that I've got is is having to synchronizing between my systems and external systems. So, Auth0 is a fantastic way of of, of creating um, uh, uh, security authentication, and it's it's such a nice um, it's it's a relief that something else external is handling that side of things. However. Uh, I would like eventually to have people having their own profiles and other bits and pieces, so I would have to communicate back to o to Auth0 to get that information. Um, I'm, I put my hands up and say I've, I've actually, all I've done with Auth0 so far is read about it. <laughs> um, I haven't actually used Auth0. What I'm considering is building my own through um, FOSS user um, and the Symphony Guard. However, I don't know. That's a bit of a bit of a task in itself. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, 
Um, uh, Blazer has uh, uh, mentioned, uh, would you use Orth guards to protect your roots, or is that just an angler thing? Um, so my, uh, so I'm guessing you talking about the roots of a user specific um, uh, location. Say changing one's password is a user specific route, for instance, or get just getting to the to the profile section and seeing the previous courses that the user has has accessed and other bits and pieces. Um, so I'm thinking maybe having, um, so with auth, with OAuth 2, you can have different grant types. So you would have a grant type for the system and you would have a grant type for passwords for the user. So you would have client credentials for the system and then you would have passwords for the user. Um, and then what would happen is when a user logs in, a token gets generated, sent back, uh, with a bearer token, that bearer token will be stored uh, potentially in local storage because we're using Gatsby here um, and then pushed up in the headers for all the other subsequent um, API requests and then that would be checked at that point using probably um, the FOSS user uh, FOSS OAuth bits and pieces. Yes, so JWT. That's right. <coughs> um, okay, FOSS, um, F-O-S, is Friends of Symphony. So Symphony being the PHP um, backend that I'm gonna be using to build the APIs. Um, Friends of Symphony have a fantastic suite of bundles for, uh, do they call them bundles these days? Anyway, a, a fantastic suite of components, I think I should call them, um, for user, um, uh, uh, creating users, creating um, uh, OAuth bits and pieces, creating roles and groups. They, they're brilliant. I've used FOSS stuff uh, a fair bit in the projects that I've done for my freelance clients. I think also, um, and this is something that I haven't really played with, um, uh, recently is that the new there's new stuff new toys in symphony that allow you to use this like the symphony guard system i haven't really played around with that too much but I, i'll certainly definitely have a look at that at, at that specific time yeah i mean this we're, we're talking about we're talking about real in the weed stuff here <laughs> you know okay so i still want is home is true uh, I'm going to remove um, probably this. I'm just probably going to have... Um, let's just put in a strong tag of homepage. Um, now, we don't need any of the prop types. We don't need any of this. We don't need any of that stuff. I mean, this is all going to be replaced with as I mentioned, um, the other content that's coming through. Now, I don't know, although I could probably certainly say that Ghost is not the only place that the data is gonna come from, um, especially with the courses. The courses themselves, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, the courses themselves are not gonna be in Ghost. And I know that Ghost has a fantastic way of having um, user members and subscriptions and all of this stuff, and you can integrate it well with Patreon and all of that jazz, but I don't think it's going to suit what I need it to do um, without really sort of breaking it in half. So what I'm gonna do is create my own set of APIs and my own content management system for the courses. As I mentioned before, when I upload a course, um, the tutorials on YouTube, I'm also doing that to um, uh, Vimeo as well. Um, <coughs> so I'll have my own suite of microservices with APIs running in the background. Um, and then the homepage will be used to then call upon all of these various bits and pieces um, using GraphQL. GraphQL is wonderful because you can call many um, APIs and return you know, a single response. Um, so I'll do that eventually we'll get to that point <laughs> so I don't think I don't think the user management and I don't think the courses will be held in ghost I think just 
the podcast and the blog will be held in Ghost. And actually, I think that's probably a better way in terms of a security point of view, because then if if the um, if the ghost thing gets compromised, you know, or or goes down or what have you, then the courses um, will stay up. And if the courses go down, then that's te totally different to the content. Um, yes. So the. The, the, the async calls will be made um, on data that... Um, that's a very good question, Blazer. That's a very, very good question. Something that I've I've thought about a lot about this. You know, I, I was umming and ahhing about whether to use Gatsby for this at all um, and just just building the whole thing in Symfony, you know, and having done. Um, but I, I, I honestly think that I will be updating this fairly infrequently because um, it, it takes me a long time to produce a course, <laughs> a very long time to produce a course. So I think that what I'm going to do is, 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 is probably do a whole build, system build, when a new course goes up. So it won't be, um, it won't be like that. It will just be a, a build, probably through the webhook um, that, um, that I will chat with David about. Um, when we get to that point, of obviously, um, and I think that the the blog episodes, bl bl the blog posts themselves, they're going to be the videos that aren't tutorials, they and aren't courses. They're going to be just me talking as I do every week. Um, and again, that's only one one per week. So I think really the deployments are going to be very small when this goes out. I would like to think. So perhaps once or twice three times a week nothing more than that really um, which means that the system will get generated again all of those times however when a user logs in that needs to be done um, that can't you can't rebuild the site every time a user logs in that's just daft um, so that will have to be done um, differently you know post build um, and also um, when looking back through the user's previous previously viewed um, uh, catalog of courses that they've they've watched that would all have to be done post build too so there's going to be a, a so just to just to explain this a little bit better uh, if I can show you the portal so not the portal if I can show you the functionality so these are the user stories for a logged in functionality and these user stories will be based upon post-build calls um, but we're not there yet that's that's we, we haven't even got to that point <laughs> in the journey um, yeah yeah I agree I agree um, Yeah, I, I, so what I did um, is I wrote down in a notepad all of the potential technology that I could use, and then I wrote beside each one pros and cons. And if it didn't fit right, if there was a con in there that, that I felt would be such a big leap stretch to, to do, then I dismissed it. Um, I mean, at one point I was even thinking about putting everything in Drupal. Um, you know, just having one one big thing. However, um, you know, that does everything. But I think I would prefer to have smaller little, dare I say, microservices that do things, specific things, specifically. <laughs> um, yeah. That's true. I could I could cash the calls too. No worries. No worries. I'm drinking um, I'm drinking tea. So don't you worry about having too much coffee. Mm. We've got uh, we've got twenty. Thank you for reminding me, Tony. We've got um, we've got uh, ten ish minutes before the town hall. <laughs> We got ten minutes before the town hall. The town hall for those who've just uh, just joined. Um, so 
for Twitch subscribers and Patreons, uh, every month we have a town hall meeting where I talk uh, to and listen. I do a lot of listening to the to the community um, about how they would like how to cope well, uh, to improve suggestions on video content. Um, we do that once a month. So if you're interested, uh, consider becoming a Twitch subscriber or a Patreon, and then you'll get access to the town hall. Um, th and that's uh, that's running from Discord. Thank you very much for putting that link in into the chat. Am I going to be able to do this in 10 minutes? <laughs> um, so, what, what have we done? Okay, we've, we've added that as a homepage. <laughs> um, we, so we don't need this. That can go. This can go. The prop types. We don't need the prop types. Because uh, these are all talking about ghosts. Uh, pages and stuff like that. Posts. We don't need those. We don't need these. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need this. Not yet. Uh, we don't need those. Um, and we don't need that either. And we don't need that. Okay. Let me refresh my page and see if I've set the thing on fire. <laughs> ah, no, that's the code of conduct. Uh, here we go. There we go. So, homepage. Boom. <coughs> okay, so that's that done. <laughs> uh, so, remove... Um, blog post from I need to put this back into uh, board mode don't I um, and it's probably the last let's see if I can search by an epic uh, blog page there we go um, love it or hate it Jira does have some interesting filters some really good filters um, okay so we are in remove and that's done um, the next thing I'm going to do is create the blog post and pages. However, this one, I think, has sub subtasks. Yes. So create an API endpoint. That is actually technically done. Technically, because that's, that is running off of um, uh, the, the ghost API endpoint. That's already done for me. Um, so that's, that's done. So how does one move that from a to-do to done? There we go. Um, okay, so now we're doing a, gonna do create template. Pagination is technically also done too. So creating the template. So what I need to do, I'm gonna do create page. This should go to forward slash blog. Hey, King Men Alive! Hey, hey, how's it doing? How you going? How you doing? I hope um the it came up on Discord all right that I was streaming. Ten minute warning for the uh, for the town hall. <laughs> <coughs> Let's hope that my uh, microphone works like um, you know. Not like it did last time, where everybody was chatting and I was like, I can hear you, but I can't. <laughs> okay, blog. So, this is the blog um, page. How do I now get this to then run from that page? Do I, do I, I think I need to actually create a pages page, right? Let me see, in config. 10 minutes for the town hall. Yes, that's right. I'm playing Twitch Live. Ooh, that sounds like a great game. <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes for the town hall. Start URL is slash...
<laughs> Was that your public service announcement? <laughs> no worries, Blazer up. No, no worries. Oh, blaze up. I should say Blazer up. <laughs> Have a good day. Speak to you later. Toilet humor on the chat. Um, what I'm going to do is change this to be um, blog rather than index. Say what it is. Can you see? Say what it is. Say what you see. to be uh, main blog page slash blog loads all posts from ghost um, and uses pagination to nav navigate the number of posts that should appear can be done in the site config under posts per page okay I think, don't think we need to worry about that um, so how do I um, GraphQL query. Duplicate definitions. More than one ghost post. Doesn't really say whereabouts that's coming from. Duplicated documents. Four minutes to go until the um, notorious town hall. Hello. this out from there now. I just want to check the, not that, I want to check the config. Posts, pages, exclude. So this is complaining that the limit here is not being passed through. <clears throat> limit variable limit was not provided. Um, this page queries uh, post that ascending order, the limit and skip values are used for pagination. Okay. I see. So why would then, why would this therefore work, okay, if it was just in there? Let me rebuild that. <laughs> if 
The GraphQL, GraphQL in a non-page component will not be ran. Gotcha. On a, yeah, I need to make that a page component. If failing components is a regular component, okay. I think I'm gonna have to, just due to time, I've got two minutes, I think I'm gonna have to uh, work through this off stream. But I think I know what I need to do. So we're gonna go to um, that view. Hello. Oh, you can see all the bits and pieces behind me. Now I'm sat down. I'm gonna stand up, get ready for the town hall. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> I love standing desks. Right, in two minutes, we're going to um, do the town hall. So, if you haven't done so already, head over to Discord and um, whilst I'm faffing about with a microphone stand, and uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you ever so much, guys. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been fun. I will be back um, on Tuesday. I'll be back on Tuesday for. Um, uh, the design patterns course that we're doing on PHP. But for now, I will see you all soon. Have a great Sunday. Um, have fun, whatever you're up to. And I'll see everybody, or I'll speak to everybody, on the Discord server in just a second. I'm just going to change systems and various bits and pieces, so I'll be uh, probably two minutes. But uh, I'll see you all again. Happy coding, everyone. See you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>